guys, it's Amber, and I have Brandon again. Hello. Um, so today we wanted to talk to you about our um The cults of White Horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just jump to the point on that one. Um we wanted to talk to you about the experiences we've had uh with our local cult. S- <laughs> <laughs> Satanist cult, to be specific. Um yeah, you've had more like actual personal <laughs> encounters with it than I have. So I'm gonna. These let stories you... always get people. They're like, "What?" <laughs> I'm gonna let you talk about. Sure. That one. <laughs> I've heard all of these stories before, and then I have stuff that we've we have done a little tie-in at the together. End, I guess. Um, so it's not just gonna be his stories, although we can do that if you want that to happen. So. <laughs> Special you know, request. <laughs> special request. Hit the like button and we'll get Brandon doing his own stories. But for now, we're going to talk about the satanic cult of White Horse. Yeah. So um, this kind of happened over the last couple of years, I guess, probably three or four years. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, we live in White Horse, Yukon. Very uh, remote city. Lots of extensive trail networks, etc. And a lot of very spiritual and colorful people up here, I guess you could say. Um, I was on one of the trail systems one night across from my house. Uh, it was about 9 or 10 o'clock in the evening, early summer. And mind you, at that time of the year, 10 o'clock, is, it's still fairly bright out, you know? So I didn't feel too bad. I was meeting my friends up at one of the benches. We were going to go hang out and probably drink. Not much going on in the summer. Um, I walked up the hill, and no- I would normally I take my dog just because it's good exercise for her, good company for me. But I was like, no, fuck it. Like, I don't know how long I'll be up here. I don't want my dog waiting with me. So I'm walking up alone, and it's not uncommon for people to have little bush fires everywhere. You know, it's just it's a kind of a respect thing not to do it on the main trails. You know, and it's more or less also a fire hazard. <laughs> we live in a very very dry area, so I'm walking up and I see this fire quite literally right in the middle of one of the main paths. And instantly I'm like, what the fuck? And as I get closer, I'm seeing like people standing around in a circle. And that's when I was just like, one, this is really early to be having a bush party because it's still bright. And for two, who's this dumb that does it right here when somebody's going to be walking their dog and call you in, you know? So as I'm getting closer, I'm realizing all these people are wearing like black and what they have like their hoods up and it's just very like weird. So I dodged off the path before they could kind of see me because they're kind of over the hill. And um, I dodged off the path and pulled out my phone because I need to videotape this or something, Snapchat it, I don't care. So I pulled out my phone and when I go to like record the Snapchat and I like look up, they're gone. And it's just the fire burning. With that, I booked shit. I was yelling Marco Polo. That's my and my friend's kind of little communication thing if we're ever lost and I can hear her in the distance yelling polo and I'm like oh shit she's far so I'm booking it to her and I get there and she's like the hell's going on like what's up I'm like did you see a bunch of people like walk through here or run through here and she's like no and I'm like okay well there's this freaking ritual fire shit going on down the road like five minutes I don't know what's going on so whatever like I just tried to like digest that and you know bury it I guess so later on in the summer, I'm just enjoying, you know, like a late night drive. And at this point now, it is dark in the summers. Like it's it's about August. I'm out at one or two in the morning driving through downtown. And it's just like a driver's dream. You know, it's a, almost like a ghost town at night. It's just all these highways and road systems going through. And it's a good place to go de-stress. So I might just out for a drive. And I, they always tell you to report wildfires up here. You know, a lot of people are aware of the dangers of fire with BC's fire season and Fort Mac, for example. Yeah. So we are very diligent. If there is a fire, you report it because you don't know. And I see one kind of in a little patch of brush just off to one of the uh, stretches of road. And I'm like, oh, God, like, do I need to call this in? So I pulled over and I'm about to call the fire line or 911 to report this. And I see figures kind of through the trees standing So I got out and I I walked in the ditch a little bit and just kind of like went behind the tree and like looked. And sure enough, there's people standing around this freaking fire. And I was like, nope, hell no. (laughs) Got in my car and just freaking peaced out. The last time I was actually at the bench, 
with another group of people. Mind you, this like a, almost a year had passed after that. Just a little time jump. And we're up at the bench hanging out and across from the bench, so the bench kind of overlooks this beautiful little wetland that kind of cuts into this depression. And then there's another ski trail system kind of across. And then there's actually an old copper hall trail that cuts through the back as well, which there'll probably be another video just on the copper hall trail. Yeah. But um, that's always been a very active area as well, apart from the Grey Mountain area. Anyway, we're all sitting at the bench hanging out and looking across, we see like a fire and I've had fires over there. It's a little bit more in the bush, you know, like it's not on the main trails. Like I would feel more safe camping out over there. I see this fire and I'm like, hmm, wonder who's over there. You know, cause we're nosy. We're small town kids, you know, like everybody knows everybody like what's going on. And then I'm like looking and another fire kind of starts. And then a third fire starts. I'm mean, like me and my friend are looking at each other like, Okay, like, for people to be starting fires, like, th these are a couple hundred meters in distance, mind you. So, somebody had to be at all these sites just lighting them off, you know? So, we got freaked out and we left. And I was just, you know, convinced that this was just gonna go into my book of, like, what the fuck experience is and just leave it at that. My cousin's here, like, we were out up on the Copper Hall, just doing our little ghost hunting. I, were we... Were we even ghost hunting at that point, or were we, we were just up walking doing the dogs? Something. We might have been walking the dogs, but we we wanted to go for like a little experience, I guess you could say. Yeah. And we had all the dogs with us, and there's this old kind of like pit area that, and there's like these burnt out cars, and it's where a lot of people go do their aftergrads for high school and whatnot. I've definitely partied up there before, but it's all, it's always been a weird vibe up there. And the dogs had kind of leaned towards one of the little stray paths, and mm. I just walked and I just followed them. And the girls caught up to me when we got there. There's like all this like police tape, yeah, like, caution tape like around, and like it just is really weird. And then Megan and Amber are like looking, and there's like fucking like sticks like out of the ground in like an even row, yeah, I guess you could say. And um, there's like was it a pentagram or something? There's some kind of like a symbol. They had like. You, like, got to the top of this mound, and it was in a little bit of a clearing, and there was a fire pit built out of rocks mm -hmm. with very obviously a fresh fire had been inside it, and they had created a pentagram out of the burnt wood. Yeah, and it was, like, charred blocks of wood laying on top of it, not just the coals itself. It looked very ritualistic, I guess you could and say. And then, like, the three... Um, pieces of wood that he was talking about were literally in a perfect diagonal line mm -hmm. from the fire pit towards somewhere else and they were evenly spaced and like they were trees like they were like cut down stuck like, in fence here post fence trees post trees almost yeah and they had like roped them off with the caution tape it was really weird and i'm pretty sure we pulled out like a phone or whatever and looked at the four directions yeah, so the way, it was that, lined up. the way that they had, like, positioned everything with this line of trees that they had made, and then, like... And the, where the sun would come in through, through the two the of the trees, mountains. And, like, everything else was just super ritualistic, um, very creepy. The feeling there was not good at not all. Okay. The dogs were not okay. We were not okay. And it was just unease. Like, there's a lot of unease. And... Megan and I have a fairly extensive knowledge, not like we're not experts on everything. You never can be. That doesn't happen. Um, but we have an, a fairly extensive knowledge of like how to shut things down. So, um, you know, it's ritual practice, ritual I guess. practice to like clear close a, a space, close a circle, close a portal, close a rip in the veil whatever you want to call it um we have quite a bit of practice doing this shows you how much we come across it <laughs> um <laughs> the wicker roots kind of help too you know <laughs> but we've got this we're looking at all of these things put together and you could walk through the line of trees and you would feel the energy, energy back and forth between through. the two of them so they had opened something there was something that was coming in and out of and that it, area. And it was not good. No. Like, it wasn't good at all. Um, there had been quite a few parties that had happened at that point that were a little on edge um, of just, like, weird things happening. 
during the parties. People had stopped going there. And yeah, people had literally yeah. stopped partying in this area after what we can assume this ritual happened mm-hmm. because it was just like and mind you, the ritual site wasn't far from the party, but it was kind of hidden. Yeah. So if you didn't really go looking for it, you wouldn't find it either. Yeah. Like, and there's there's no way you would have seen the ritual site from the party spot. Like, nothing. But people just stopped partying in this area because it was just it's getting, getting to be creepy. too much. Yeah. So we, that day while we were there, we took care of it. We were like, no, we're closing this. We don't know took who opened all the fence it. Posts, we took everything out. Reversed we, the reversed the whole the thing that symbols happened. And, yeah. And the what really struck us is that where this entire thing happened is in an area of the Copper Hall where it is almost a dead zone. Mm-hmm. Like the, no birds chirp. Um, quite a little bit further up the mountain behind it. The mountain. It's part of a hill going up the mountain a little bit further there's like a big clearing and it's literally a full circle clearing Mm. with nothing but a rock yeah that's a creepy place too and we should post some pictures or something (laughs) birds do not fly through it no they They fly fly around around it it. yeah that's Um, what we've noticed up there and like my dog um i have two dogs i have a pit bull cross and i have a little um mini fox terrier cross and my pit bull, when we're walking him out there, he can be off leash. It's out in the middle of the woods. We can let him run. He can do his thing. He burns his energy, whatever. But in like a good 200 foot stretch of road, we don't see him. He beelines off the road and it's in that area mm-hmm. where this ritual site was, where this clearing is. He disappears mm-hmm. and we don't see him until the other side. It was happening all the time and he would just go super sneaky, super weird he would get really agitated um, and just really generally creeped out. So um, once we closed everything, the dogs kind of felt a little bit better. They got a little more comfortable. We ended up finishing our walk and then ended up coming back a couple months later. Maybe or even so. like a year. I feel, like, I feel year? like a year went by again or something. And then they got a message yeah, so another after all of this happened, another year went by. We were back out and we were we went out with a couple of friends. Um and I'm not going to say their names just for security's sake. Um but we went out with a couple of friends. She brought uh our one friend brought somebody with her and we all went out for this walk and we had kind of brought up this area and he looked at us and he went, "Yeah, there's a satanic group here in town and out here is where we do some of our rituals. And at this point he had explained to us that he had left the group was no longer practicing. He um, felt very uncomfortable with the way that things were going, was not happy with any of it. So he had stopped practicing himself, but he did remember where all of these things were um, and where all these ritual sites were. And so we kind of said like, well, we closed one. Like, we dealt with one of these sites, so you need to show us where this site is because if this is the one that we dealt with, like, we need to know where the other ones are. Like, where else mm-hmm. are you doing this? Because you're causing a very severe... Um, disruption. Disruption. In you know, and the, it's changing the energy. Yeah, like, and in the space-time continuum. Like, <laughs> there is there is a lot of disruption in the force here. Mm-hmm. Um. And so we, he took us to this spot and sure enough, it was the exact same spot. Everywhere I saw these people were spots. (laughs) And he started explaining like, yeah, we've done it here. We've done it here. We've done it here. You started going like white. Yeah. It freaked me the fuck out. Like I knew I wasn't crazy. (laughs) It was two years in the making and I knew it wasn't crazy (laughs) at that point. Like, And it just, it became this like crazy thing that like you hear about satanic cults all the time you hear them down in the states especially with the mm-hmm. kkk and like just all of those shit kinds of things the woods and murders and and just like all this crazy you. stuff and you're like we're in the middle of nowhere we have a little town there's not really anything going on here wrong so wrong um i have not been um out there this year because we uh a, I got a more full time job where I worked a lot of nights, so being able to go out and do things at night is kind of impossible. Um, but also, 
we've had a lot of issues with bears in town this year. Mm -hmm. So where this area is, it's all uh, park and bear country. So we haven't been able to take our dogs out there and take them off leash. Uh, We haven't been able to go out there by ourselves without some form of protection, bear bells, bear spray. Not that that we don't like the bears, but it has been a very active. I had a field job all summer and the bears were everywhere. (laughs) Like it's it's been a very active bear season for us. Which, Um, if you think about it, though, that was probably kind of a good thing. Yeah. That the animals kind of returned to some of these areas, you know what I mean? Where they hadn't really been. Where they hadn't been for a couple years. So, so in in all in all, at the end of it all, it kind of like we closed off a couple more places and we kind of smoothed out that area of the um, road. And when we did end up taking the dogs out this year at one point to that specific place, it was much more calm. Um, Rollo actually stayed a lot closer to us. He was more willing to come back. He mm-hmm. was more willing to actually like hang out with us while we walked that section of road which made us feel really good and kind of just clarified we had done our job Mm -hmm. to the best of our ability to make it safer. So I don't know. I don't know about any other practices. I've heard a couple of things from um, some other people that I know having found uh, weird ritualistic symbols Mm -hmm. painted on. It's a couple of creepy abandoned cabins with some weird shit going on. Cement um places and yeah some of the cabins are really 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 not messed up there's been some weird i mean witchcraft is very much alive in the yukon yeah i wouldn't necessarily call that witchcraft but i mean it does tie in with it i guess witchcraft and satanic ritual and what have you but it was more the darker side i'm not trying to there's a lot of dark magic yeah i'm not trying to down on that at all because i am a practice a practitioner of green or white witchcraft i guess you could call yeah you know but that kind of stuff is just the stuff you don't want to fuck with you know like and i think i think too for us here in this place it's um it's so hit and miss Mm -hmm. and i think the problem here is that a lot of these people who are doing it don't know what they're doing that's the other thing too like they will do their research quote unquote and but they're not looking into the full thing of it. No, and, and a lot of them are really amateur about it, I guess. Like, they, a lot of them... They take it as a joke. Yeah. They to be frank. Take it as a joke and not understand kind of the consequence. I mean, it's one of the laws of physics. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. You know, what you put out will come back to you. The threefold law in Wicca is once you have one finger pointing out, three point back at you. Yeah. You know, like, people don't realize that. And it's the same thing. You know, we can even say that, argue the same thing with Ouija boards. And just other kind of spirituality yeah. type tools. If you don't see the visual stimulation effect, you think it's, oh, well, fuck, that was bullshit. Yeah. But you don't realize what you just de- like did. You just altered something, you know? Like, yeah. the effect is a bit longer to come to realization, but it's there. Yeah. You know? And I think, too, like, it's just, there's so many people not taking any of this seriously in our town mm-hmm. um that it is hindering the people who are taking it seriously there's a and, lot of people that go out and do practice in the woods in a it, safe and holistic manner and, and it's totally taking away from cool. that you know like there it's is a lot of buddhism and different practices up here that people go and just enjoy that raw natural yeah. spirit and it's taking away from that but yeah if you guys have any experiences yourselves or stories of your local cult hit us up in the comments yeah Put, put all your experiences down in the comments. Um, hit the like button if you like the video, because I'd love to do more of this stuff. Um, talk about our experiences in our little hometown uh, and talk about experiences that we've had in other places. I'm sure Brandon could go on and on about <laughs> the places that he's lived down in Alberta. Um, I have lots of experiences in BC as well as the East Coast for both of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'd love to talk to you guys about that kind of stuff. We'd love to do more uh stories and just kind of canadian show and tell basically about all of this kind of stuff so yeah paranormal of the wilderness paranormal wilderness that's (laughs) yeah pretty good way of putting it so yeah hit the like button subscribe turn on the notifications because that way i know you're seeing my stuff and you're actually enjoying it and yeah we'll catch you guys next time